Do you love him? Give him a hand clap. He's good. I'm glad he kicked the devil's butt a long time ago, ain't you? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Now, one time out in the woods, there was this deer. And I don't mean to get graphic, so y'all bear with me. And this deer had caught the scent of the female deer. Now, he's got one thing on his mind. He's chasing the female deer. And he's going through the woods, and now his senses that's normally aware of everything have been blinded. <clears throat> he don't know anything, but he's going to go to where the female is. And he's coming through the woods, and he comes to an opening. And there's all kinds of other scents there, but he's not catching them. And up in a tree stand is a hunter. And the hunter has a bow, and he's got an arrow. And the last thing that that deer sees is that flaming arrow shot from that hunter's bow going into his heart, and he dies. About an hour later, there's another deer that comes by, the same path, caught the same scent, going the same way. But this deer's a little bit wiser. He's listening to the voice that's in his head, and he said, look out, it's a trap, there's danger. He goes into the same clearing where this other deer was, and he catches the scent of the hunter, and he bolts backwards in the arrow, it's shot, but it misses him. Now, we're sort of like those deer. We have an enemy that's hunting us. It's Satan. And he's got arrows that he's shooting at us. And he wants to hurt, maim, and destroy us. Now, we can listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit and miss being shot, or we can just blindly stumble through life, and we're going to get wore out with these flaming arrows. Okay, we're going to go to the 91st Psalm this morning. It says, Live under the protection of God most high and stay in the shadow of God all powerful. Then you will say to the Lord, You are my fortress, my place of safety. You are my God, and I trust you. The Lord will keep you safe from the secret traps and the deadly diseases. He will spread his wings over you and keep you secure. His faithfulness is like a shield or a city wall. You won't need to worry about dangers at night or arrows during the day. And you won't fear diseases that strike at the dark or sudden disaster at noon. Now see, this, this hunter, this devil, is shooting arrows at us. And he means to hurt us. Now an arrow is a deadly weapon that is shot from a bow. It will always maim and sometimes it will kill you. Now, the devil's not necessarily shooting one that's got feathers and a wooden shaft or a metal shaft, but he shoots spiritual arrows at you. And we want to discuss some of these arrows that he's shooting. The first one I want to talk about is the flaming arrow of death. You can go along in life and everything will be good, and you've got a set number of days, David, that I believe that you live out. The Bible says that we can shorten our days by so doing. So Satan has got this arrow of death, and when he shoots this at you, your days are shortened. Now in the Bible, I believe it's in the book of Kings, there's a story about a man of God, and he's wandering from city to city, telling people about what God's going to do. He's a prophet. And he stops at this one woman's house all the time. Her, her and her husband live there. And she's built him a little shed on the side of the house. And this is where he stayed. And the man of God thinks, well, now, she's been so good to me. I'd like to do something to help her. So he asked her, what do you, would you like me to do? And she said, well, I'm barren. I have no children. I'd like to have a child. Well, he prays, and she becomes pregnant, and she has a little boy. Now, this little boy, I mean, he's a treasure to her. He's special. And one day, as he got up a little bit older, he goes out into the field with his dad, as his dad's working the field. This boy's not sick. He's not ill. He has no disease. 
Satan shoots a flaming arrow of death that hits him right in the head. The boy grabs his head, says, my head, my head, my head. His father says, take him home to his mother now. And they take him home to his mother. And she sits and holds him on her lap until he dies. Now this could be the end of the story. Satan has shot the baby with a flaming arrow of death. The baby wasn't sick. The woman runs to the man of God. The man of God comes and breathes life back into this child. Sometimes in life, our life is shortened by the things that we do. It's not necessarily a, a, a disease that gets you, but it's sudden death, a stroke, a heart attack, a, a car wreck, a plane crash. Something sudden. But we can stop that. All we've got to do is call upon the name of the Lord, plead His blood, ask that the Holy Spirit would come and destroy that flaming arrow of death and claim what the Word says. The Word says that we will live and not die. We need to get a hold of what we've got today. We can say, I ain't dying, Satan. Now, we're going to come out, go out of this life when our time's up. But before that, we don't have to. We don't have to listen to the lies of the devil. The next flaming arrow that he wants to shoot at you is an arrow of sickness. Now, this is not a normal sickness, but this is a, a lingering sickness. It's a sickness that goes on and on and on for months and, and, and years and years and years, and the doctors can't fix it. You can go to any doctor you want to, and it's not going to be fixed because you've been stricken, hit by an arrow of sickness. Now, in the Bible, we have a, an example of this. There's a woman in the New Testament that has an issue of blood, and she has had it for 12 years. Now, this woman is sick, and she's been sick, and she's went to every doctor there is to go to. And then one of them doctors, all they've done is took her money. They have not helped her. They have not healed her, cured her. But when she reached and touched the hem of Jesus' garment, she was healed. So if the devil shoots you with one of these flaming arrows of sickness, what you got to do is call on the name of the Lord, plead his blood over your situation, ask for the Lord to send the Holy Spirit to smite that arrow of sickness that's in your life and proclaim the word of God which says, I'm going to be well, no disease is coming near my dwelling. There can be flu raging out there. It's not coming near my dwelling because the word says it won't if you believe God. The next one I want to talk to you is about an arrow of division. Now you may think that you're a Christian and you're immune from satanic attacks. You're not. He can attack you all. You need to be weary. You need to be alert. You need to be aware. In the Bible, the Holy Ghost set two men aside to be ministers and to preach unto the nations. He set Paul and Barnabas aside to go on mission trips to city, to city, to city to preach the word of God. He set them together as a team. They were a strong team. And things were going good and they come back and they were getting ready to go again. And here Satan goes, pop, an hour of division. Paul and Barnabas got in such a heated dis disagreement they wouldn't even go together anymore, David. So Paul went with Silas and Barnabas went with somebody else. They were shot with an hour of division. Have you ever noticed sometimes people are married for 20 and 30 years and man, they get along great, then all of a sudden, Hey, I'm filing for a divorce. You've been shot with an arrow of division. Sometimes brother and sister can be in unity from, from when they're in diapers until they're 60 years old, and all of a sudden one brother's mad at the other brother, or a sister's mad at a brother or a sister. 
They've been shot with an arrow of division. And if you're shot with that arrow of division, you've got to do one thing. It's very important that you listen. Call on the name of the Lord because he's the one that can do something. Plead the blood of Jesus over your situation. Ask the Lord to send the Holy Ghost to smite that arrow of division and do what the Word says. May the brothers dwell in unity, not division. Claim what the Word's saying to you. Another weapon that he uses, another arrow, is the arrow of discouragement. Have you ever been discouraged? Have you ever been discouraged when you really just didn't have a reason? Have you ever been depressed when you really, really, you just didn't have, you just felt blue? You ever done that? I've done that. Satan sometimes shoots an arrow of discouragement. Now in the Bible, down at the river of Jordan, there's the greatest man ever born of woman baptizing people. It's John the Baptist. And he's baptizing, and he's baptizing all kinds of people. And Jesus comes up, and you know what he says. I'm not even worthy to undo your shoes here, your sandals. And he's there, and he baptizes Jesus. He sees the, a dove, the Holy Spirit, descend upon Jesus. He hears the voice of God that this is my beloved son, hear him. He's 100% convinced that Jesus is the Messiah. Everything is good. Then a few days later, he's thrown into prison. And in that dark dungeon, Satan shoots him with an hour of discouragement. He begins to doubt. He says, he sends his disciples to ask Jesus, are you really the Messiah? And he says, go back and tell John the blind, have their eyes open. The deaf hear, the lame walk. The poor have the gospel preached to them. You see, when we're shot with that arrow of discouragement, it's easy when you're in ministry to get discouraged. It's real easy, I can tell you that. Well, oh, they don't like my singing. They don't like my playing. They don't like my preaching. It's real easy to get discouraged. But when you see that discouragement rising up, this is what you need to do. Call on the name of the Lord. Plead the blood of Jesus. Ask the Holy Ghost to come and smite that arrow of discouragement and proclaim that I will succeed in whatever I do. That's all you got to do. Believe what the Word says. Now sometimes it's used an hour, arrow of, of devouring. And, and what this arrow does it's when you're making all kinds of money and then enough to pay the bills. But you're making more than enough. And it seems like when, man, you, you, you got it clear. you got something coming in good. you got an opportunity to get something you need. Something tires up. You ever, ever been through that? You've been shot with an arrow of devouring. See, Job went through that. He lost everything he had. He lost all his animals, all his stock, all his children. But in the end, he was restored. But we must learn when we're shot with an arrow of devouring. Number one, call on the name of the Lord. Don't call on no lawyer. Don't call on no banker. Call on the name of the Lord. Plead his blood. Ask the Holy Ghost to smite that arrow of devouring that you've been shot with. And proclaim what the Word says, I will prosper in everything that I do. I will prosper. I will be a success in everything that I do. The next one I want to talk to you about is a little bit personal. It's called the arrow of generational curses. Do you believe that people can put curses on you? Now, if you're born again, fired up, living for God, they can't. But you do have a generational curse that can be put upon you. There's all kinds of examples of this in the Bible. All kinds of examples. Elisha's servant stole money and 
He was cursed that he would have leprosy all his life and his descendants would have leprosy from now on. That's a generational curse. Sometimes a generational curse is, uh, well, you know, my great-great-granddaddy had heart, heart problems and my granddaddy had heart problems and I've got heart problems and my kids are going to have heart problems. That's a generational curse. Well, Grandma had diabetes and Mama had diabetes and I'm going to have diabetes. Well, you know, I, I, I never could hold a job down. <laughs> Grandpa couldn't and his daddy couldn't either. Generational curses. And we all experience these. And getting a little bit personal, I remember I was about eight, nine years old. My grandfather, he was really into, uh, it's called Sunshine and Health. It's a nudity magazine. I mean, it's like a Playboy. He was big into that. He really was hooked into that band. He had to have four or five copies of that coming every month, and he'd sit there and, and look at them pictures and lust, and it was bad. Well, my dad, he got the same thing. Only my dad decided he was going to be the porn old man of the town, and, and that's what he was. And then come to my turn. Everybody said, you're going to be just like your grandpa, you're going to be just like your daddy. And you're going to be deep, deep in porno. It stops here. It stops here. I'm not going to be in it. My son ain't going to be in it. My grandsons ain't going to be in it. Because I believe what God's word says. I don't have to go there. I don't have to do what my daddy did or my granddaddy did. Because when that generational curse comes, I called on the name of the Lord. I pled his blood. I asked the Holy Spirit to come and smite that in my life. And I proclaimed, hey, I'm not going there. You see, God will honor his promises to you. The next error I want to talk about, it, it's, it's very easy to get caught into this one. It's called the arrow of deception. And, and when you're hit with this arrow, you think wrong's right. It becomes to the point that Unless God beats me to death, it's all right. No, we've got to do what the Word says. If it's wrong in the Word, it's wrong. But we get to the point that we believe a lie. Because we can believe what Satan says. Do it the easy way. Do what you want to do. It's all right. You see, Apostle Paul, before he became Apostle Paul, his name was Saul, and he was on the way to Damascus, to persecute Christians. And he had been smitten with this arrow of deception. He thought killing Christians was the right thing to do. But he met Jesus on the road to Damascus and his life changed. So if the devil's trying to deceive you about something, call on the name of the Lord. Plead his blood. Ask the Holy Spirit to smite Smite and destroy that arrow of deception and proclaim what the Word says. I'll be of a sound mind. My mind won't be cloudy. My mind will be sound. And that's what you've got to do. Now, how do we become targets for the devil? How do you think we do this? Why does Satan want to attack you? First of all, he don't like you. You're made in the image of God. He already don't like you. You're made in the image of God. So you're already an enemy. And we got a lot of Satanists around here that think Satan likes them. Satan don't like them no more than he does me, and he hates me. Because you're made in God's image, Satan hates you. 
Satan can shoot you with one of these flaming arrows if you're not born again, if you ain't got your life covered by the blood of Jesus. You're an open target. Now, here's some word that gets a little bit sticky. When we've got unconfessed sin in our life, I'm talking about sin that's not under the blood of Jesus, that we have not repented of sin. The Bible says that the Lord takes that hedge down, that we receive chastisement. So if, if you're getting chastised, you need to get that thing out of your life and you need to confess that sin that you ain't confessed. And when you do that, everything will be all right. We open the door to the devil by some of the things we do. And I don't mean to pick and meddle. But sometimes we open the doors by being involved in satanic activity. If you go to see, a, 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 I call them witches, fortune tellers, whatever they are, hey, you're opening up a door. And you get the, the Ouija board out and say, well, should I date Joe or John? You're opening a door to Satan. If you're playing Dungeons and Dragons, any of this satanic junk, you're opening an, up a door. If you don't have on the full armor of God, if you don't have on that helmet of salvation, that breastplate of righteousness, that belt of truth, your shoes of peace, you don't have your shield of faith up, and you ain't got the sword of the Spirit out, you're an open target. You're target practice for the devil. He's got the bow ready. He's shooting. He's shooting. But if you're born again, if you're born again, if you're covered by his blood, them arrows can't come. And if you no one realize that you're into some of this satanic activity. Get away from that junk. Get away from it. Get on the full armor of God. And man, everything will be all right. I'm glad that when the devil shoots, there's got to be a Bible somewhere around here. Yeah. When the devil shoots at me, man, hey, I got a shield. It's the word of God. I got a sword. It's the word of God. I get my shield up. No, Satan. No. No. You see, last October, he tried to take me out. He shot me with an arrow of death. He shot me with an arrow of sickness. The doctors couldn't find out what was wrong. But I got a healing God that loves me. I call on the name of the Lord. This church called on the name of the Lord. We plead the blood of Jesus. We ask the Holy Ghost to smite any affliction that comes against us. And I quote that word, Lord, I'll live and not die. Do you love him today? Do you feel maybe you've been shot by a flaming arrow? God can fix that.